I'd like to begin this event by acknowledging that we here in Nova Scotia, my colleagues who are at this end are in Mi'kma'ki, which is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by treaties of uh, peace and friendship, which the Mi'kmaq and the Wulstwuk or uh, Maliseet peoples first signed with the British crown way back in 1725. The treaties didn't deal with the surrender of lands or resources, but recognized Mi'kmaq and Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. I also want to acknowledge that institutions like the Cody Institute, which is within a larger institution, St. Evex University, St. Francis Xavier University, are really just beginning to grapple with what indigenizing the academy really means and what our role in a larger national reconciliation process should be. I want to also acknowledge that our institution is, is also just beginning to grapple with what a new relationship might look like with African Nova Scotia communities that have called this place home for almost two and a half centuries. I want to, before I hand back over, I also want to wish all of our Muslim artists and viewers a blessed Eid celebration, which begins tonight. And lastly, I just want to thank my colleague, Robin Neustader, for organizing this wonderful event and for the communi Cody Communications team, for all the work they've done in supporting it, for all of those presenting this morning, for the work that they've put in to make this possible and to all of you for tuning in. So back over to you, Robin. Wonderful, thank you, Gord. Uh, now I'm going to hand my virtual mic over to Victoria Miles to say a few words. Good day, everyone. I'm so happy you're here to celebrate the launch of One People, One Heartbeat. I'm Victoria Miles. I'm an intern working with the Women's Leadership Network uh, this summer through the Cody. I've been helping plan this online exhibit alongside some amazing individuals. For those who do not know, today is the International Day of Friendship. The International Day of Friendship was established in 2011 by the UN General Assembly. The International Day of Friendship was established to acknowledge friendships between people, countries, communities, cultures, and more to understand how together we can start conversations and learn from each other for a more peaceful world. According to the United Nations, friendship is about sharing the human spirit. We live in a big world where sometimes it can be hard to connect with others, especially through these unprecedented times we've been faced with recently. It is important to remember that through a shared spirit of human solidarity, we can still rise up, protect, and confront challenges together. That's why we chose today to launch the art exhibit, One People, One Heartbeat. We're here to show through art how we can make connections, share experiences, and build bridges between communities. The United Nations states, and I quote, through friendship, we will generate passion for a better world where all are united for the greater good, unquote. We are here to remind everyone the importance of friendship. We felt it connected deeply with the online art exhibit because One People, One Heartbeat is all about resilience and love through creativity. We wanted to shine some light and showcase how people have stayed strong and broadcast that strength for others who may need it. Remember, you're never alone and together we can stand against anything. So I wanna thank everyone again for being here and I hope you enjoy the online art exhibit. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> Now I will welcome our first contributing artist speaker, Sylvia Hodo. Sylvia is from Albania and is a graduate of the 2019 Global Change Leaders Program. Thank you again uh, for organizing this event. I'm very blessed to be part of the Cody family and this event I believe is gonna bring us much closer. Um, I'd like to uh, make a brief introduction on the work that I introduced to you guys. So if you go, uh, if we, if we go to our slide, uh, next slide, um, I'd like to briefly comment a little bit. Um, yeah, that's me. Uh, my name is Sylvia and I work uh, in the sector of financial inclusion in Albania. And we were going to introduce farmers with the subsidy schemes for coronavirus. And I found myself in a very uh, involving environment with people working in the field. And uh, this is me uh, playing with a cat after a very long uh, time working uh, and trying to, to see what are the farmers needs and how we can provide subsidies. Um, something 
something um, that could facilitate their 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 engagement. And then I could see that all the little uh, girls were playing with this beautiful cat in there. So all I did was go there, and and I found this uh, very beautiful touching moment because the cat actually uh, really needed some friendship. And uh, maybe because we live in the rural areas, maybe animals don't don't have this human touch because they are just there every day. And and she was very playful, and and it was a very beautiful moment. And I wanted to share it with all of you. Um, and the other picture, which is the one that I entered <laughs> the the contest, let's say. Um, if we grab, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, so this was, um, this was the one that I captured uh, when we went to, to visit, uh, to visit this farming community somewhere in rural Albania. Um, to be honest, um, a tractor, it's a very valuable commodity and nowadays not all farmers, unfortunately, are equipped with this uh, mechanical equipment. However, um, when we approached them, they, they really were so humbly saying, well, to us it's everyday life and for us as the external party going in there, it was very idyllic and very pure moment, like being very uh, hands down to the ground and one hand helping the other. And this is where, where we get our, our daily food. So I always want to leave this on a very amazing uh, quote that I found on, online for, for this purpose today that if you ate well today, thank a farmer. And unfortunately, farmers are still not very much appreciated for their hard labor. So I believe by, by going there and introducing these beautiful landscapes and their hard labor to, to the world, uh, maybe we could appreciate more their efforts. So, uh, on the other side, I, I was trying to be much more artistic uh, to capture a much more beautiful moment of, uh, of the guys on the field. Um, and they were somehow even shy to pose for the camera. So I was trying to hide my camera to make it look much more, uh, uh, much more natural. So in, in general, uh, what I want to portray or to convey through, through this photo is that there is life out there in, in deep rural areas. Uh, there, is, there, are, there are people just like us that they are making the best out of their day and, and, and we're all succeeding or making a bigger step to to become more prosperous and for a better for a be, for a better world. So yeah, these are my submissions in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Sylvia, and thank you for your contributions highlighting the beauty and art in the everyday. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to welcome Eva, Eva Nichols. Nicholas, to share a spoken word piece. Eva is from Unamagi, Cape Breton, here in Canada in Nova Scotia. She is the graduate of the 2019 Indigenous Women in Community Leadership Program and also a member of the Art Exhibit organizing team. So I got a poem here. It's a short poem because I know the time limit. It's called Sisters in Spirit, We Are Sacred. Sisters in Spirit, I am an Indigenous daughter my gift is hope. I am an indigenous sister. My gift is kindness. I am an indigenous woman. My gift is strength. I am an indigenous mother. My gift is to nurture and give life. I am an indigenous grandmother. My gift is peace. We are sacred, sacred beings. We honor all of creation. We are the three sisters in spirit. We are the holy trinity together. We weave 
peace, hope, and balance for all of prosperity. Our hearts beat in synchronicity for infinity. I'm sitting all my, for, all our, for all our relations, all our nations, all of creations. So the three sisters in spirit, our mother, daughter, and grandmother, the weavers that nurtures the strength of our families and nations and Mother Earth. Many, if not all, our nations have versions of the three sisters, stories, legends, and spirituality. In ours, Glooscap, our protector of the oppressed giant, and creator of all the first Ono, original people of Wabanagi, was known to grant wishes to the good. He would usually grant one wish. The time after defeating the water monster, the Ono were so grateful for Glooscap, saving them from death and suffering, that they honored him with a great feast. This feast was so meaningful to Glooscap that he granted all three wishes to the Ono. This became the first fish, the crabs, and the meeches, all of which would feed be good medicine to all people. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Eva. Alia. I welcome and invite John Graham Pohl to share his thoughts. John is a supporter of the arts and of the Cody Institute. Well, thank you, Robin, and uh, all members, all participants, all all friends. Friends is the operative word, isn't it, of the Cody Institute, present and past. And I am delighted to be asked to say a word about in the presence of uh, all of you, one people, one heartbeat, connecting through art. UNESCO, in 1945, first promoted education, science, and culture, those three those three words that are so important to us, as our human bedrock to envision, to create, and to sustain universal friendship, community, dignity, equality, peace, unity. So the title of this exhibit, One People, One Heartbeat, highlights this unity that our human race cries out for. Art is vital to our thriving, to our very surviving. There has never been a nation, a tribe, a community, a global society that did not embrace art in body, in mind, and in spirit. Never. Just think on that. Never. Is art important? Oh, yes. To me, a scientist, an educator, an artist, all my working life, creating art is actually our highest calling. We are each and every one of us, the outcome and the manifestation of that force that created our cosmos, that act of primal creativity that stands as the ineffable work of art from which all things human and more than human arose that ever drew breath upon this earth. So you, you wonderful artists who are exhibiting your work here are fulfilling your highest human destiny as artists and you're in good company. Most symbolic for me, for our present gathering, art activates and transforms us to envision, to create, to sustain that enduring universal dignity, equality, peace, togetherness in friendship and unity that is the birthright of every one of us. Thank you, artists, for your beautiful contributions to One People, One Heartbeat. Thanks. Thank you, John. I now invite our second contributing artist speaker, Kanwal Anil. Um, Kanwal is from India and is a graduate of the 2019 Livelihoods and Markets Program. Uh, very warm greetings and a happy International Friendship Day to all my artist counterparts present here on this forum. I'm really delighted and excited to be a part of this inaugural today. The mandate given to me is to discuss my art and the significance of art and creativity in my life and community and why I chose to submit to this exhibit. So let me first start with my introduction. I am a PhD in finance and teaching 
and teaching finance and accounting to MBA graduates for the past 20 years now. The pendulum of my persona oscillates between a teacher of finance and a yearner and lover of all forms of art. As a child, I was keenly attracted to all things arty, thanks to the community I was in, my school, my parental influences, and the beautiful, serene, and green environment which I grew up in. Uh, but somewhere this art connection got somewhat lost while being in the rat race of cutthroat professionalism. Uh, but thanks to the pandemic situation, the COVID-19, which hit us all badly, life took a beautiful turn for me and made me reclaim my art consciousness during these very trying times. The pandemic has proved to be an art restorer of sorts in my life. It has repainted the rather dull and sedentary expanses of my life in brighter hues. It was gentle reminder for me that life is beautiful and art is the most therapeutic influencer in my life. So after almost 20 years of non-performance on the art side, I reclaimed my brushes and easel from the attic and got back to paint and try my hands at all sorts of mediums. May it be acrylic, watercolors, fabric, naturally made colors like coffee, turmeric, and you name it. Uh, as put by Leonardo D, uh, uh, da Vinci, I will just quote Leonardo D, uh, da Vinci here. Painting is poetry that is seen rather than felt, and poetry is painting that is felt rather than seen. So the three of my artworks shared here on this forum basically show a move towards positivity and depict the prayers which have taken the form of colors, which the artist in me has made. I had started to relax and calm my mind and slowly and steadily, day in and day out, it became my silent prayer for regaining the peace, good health and prosperity the world has lost today. The alignment of my thoughts Prayers and actions culminated into a volley of such art and artifacts which adorn my home today, which also give me immense happiness to my immediate family as well as the community I live in. My first piece of art shared here on this platform is a watercolor painting of three sparrows titles, So We Are In This Together, signifies the unity required amongst us to see this through with the spirit of this, sh this too shall pass. Uh, my second piece of art is a pottery piece shaped and painted by me titled Peace in the World, Peace Within, which promotes world peace. And my third artifact, my third painting titled Lucky Mascots from India is inspired from a very traditional and spectacular Indian art form named Madhubani painting done with natural dyes and plant extracts using motifs of fishes, birds, elephants, peacocks, uh, ritual content, etc. It was originally created by the women of various communities in the Mithila region of the Indian subcontinent. Not only this, not only this has had, I have also tried my hand at paper flower making, decoupage, tissue lanterns, uh, sketching, bullet and art journaling. And I'm very hopeful that as an accounting professor, I can teach a lot of, uh, apart from the and accounting journals which we make, I can also teach them how to do bullet and art journaling to my students very soon. Let me see how I can put it across. My art pursuit has made me connect with a number of national as well as international artists, art communities and platforms such as the one I am on now and made me more aware and conscious of the art I am pursuing. Uh, for the past five months, I have been connecting and learning from my own students, peers, uh, long lost schoolmates, and seniors in the field and owe my gratitude to them for their generous advice and facilitation always. Connecting with all of them and forming a resilient community with a common purpose has been an exciting journey. And while I was at all of this, an invite from Cody for the Cody Graduate Art Exhibit landed in my email box and I got lucky. I would term it as a great opportunity for me as a beginner in the field to showcase my art here couldn't have been a better way of aggregating my honest expressions of thought on such a rich and diverse platform. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Cody Institute, St. Francis Xavier's University, Canada, and the conveners of this art exhibit for holding this meaningful event and binding us all together. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity for sharing my thoughts 
and over to you, Victoria. Many thanks once again. Thank you, Kanwal and Neil. This is, it's been such a delight to hear from the artists who have contributed to this piece and speak to their art. I'm now going to welcome Andrea Curley to share a spoken word piece. Andrea is here in Anganish, Canada. She is a graduate of the 2015 Indigenous Women in Community Leadership Program and the 2015 CDIA Facilitation Program. Andrea is also a member of the Art Exhibit Organizing Team. Good morning, thank you everybody. I just wanted to share, first of all, um, a song that was written by Teresa Bear Fox. Um, the words are essentially saying, our protectors, um, please, can you help watch over, watch over us and protect our family? I just wanted to share a little bit of that because I just wanted to um, chime in on the whole uh, one people, one heartbeat. Um, the hymns and the songs of the indigenous people across the planet, um, the vibration that that gives off is, is such a healing, soothing feeling for everybody. Um, you know, no matter, no matter your practices or your protocols for your uh, beliefs or ceremonies or whatnot. And I just thought that was fitting for today because we're in such a time where we're all in, um, we're in this pandemic together globally. And I think people are more so reaching for outlets for uh, expressions of, of art, of music, of everything that they can, that they're thinking of while sitting still. Um, First of all, happy International, International Friendship Day to everybody. Um, and what I have here is, is the painting. I did acrylic on canvas. And what it is is, is the moon. Um, I kind of had a, the image in my mind and, and just painted it by memory. Um, and I think of Gajin Sisei. And that is the name of the first female here on, on Earth. Um, and what that means to me is that, you know, when I think about the moon and, and look at the, the, when I look at her, um, I think about the respect um, that our women, you know, deserve and should, the women should be uplifted and held high all of the time because they are the life givers. They are the reason to give birth. Um, the moon ties together with, the birthing, um, like the water breaks, brings the babies. Um, you know, and I think of all indigenous people across the planet who are uh, beating their drums or shaking their rattles and sharing that vibration of love um, because we, you know, all indigenous peoples are, are dancing and praying and, and singing societies. So, um, when I look at when I look at the moon, I often think of of everybody who who does that thinking in their mind already about one people, one heartbeat. Um, and I think that in in today's time that we're getting closer to becoming, um, as John had spoke about that that search and seeking of of unity. Um, you know, love makes the world go around and 
we all know it. We all feel good when we're loved and we just need more outlets and, and, and uh, ways to express the healing of, of each other. So thank you for this time. And I'm very thankful for Cody and everybody in the planning committee for putting this on today. Um, very amazing art has been um, exhibited. Thank you, Andrea. Art continues to be a significant experience for the artist and the observer or participant, bringing people together, posing perspectives and igniting reflection and connection. We are thrilled by the response to the call for art. The art, the exhibit features a variety of art, including painting, poetry, pottery, photography, fashion, and music. I would like to thank those involved in making this virtual art exhibit possible. Salim October, Masula, Kazakeki, Master Chambala, Eva Nicholas, Andrea Curley, Carrie Lynn Paul, Brian Missouri, Victoria Miles, Sue Hawks, and Jenny McDonald. We thank our Cody colleagues and graduates for their support, as well as the big thank you to the entire global Cody network around the world. Please take time to view and enjoy the exhibit, One People, One Heartbeat, Creating Connections Through Art, which is accessible through the Cody website. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonder-filled and beautiful day.